I think we have been challenged by the circumstances to um, rethink what worship looks like. I think definitely um, that whole of life, offering your whole of life to God um, as, as worship has been reinforced. I think, I think testimony has come to the fore where people have um, been encouraged to, to, to share more about how they've seen God at work in their lives and others. Um, and I think that has been much healthier. I think music has been decentered as a, as a congregation. I, I don't think music has necessarily been as central as to some other places. Um, there's been space for lament as well, which has been very important. Being real with God in prayer and one another. An opportunity for veneer, mask, whatever term you want to use, to, to be set aside or even smashed in some cases. Um, and I think that's been really helpful because I think when we're real with God and each other, then God can actually work in and through us. I think as we, as we see God in the people that we engage with, we are encountering him. People of colour, um, people who are struggling to find food, um, but that's, there's a that sense of us encountering God as we engage with his people. I am thinking about God as creator, but seeing God as artist, seeing God also as, as redeemer. So I'm seeing God as freedom fighter. I'm seeing God as first responder. Um, I'm also seeing God as sustainer. So God as um, life partner, um, but also birth partner, because I feel like new things are growing in this season. It's, it's challenging, it's difficult, but through the process, new things are emerging. For, for me, and I know others, um, there has been more time um, close to nature. God as creator, seeing God's handprint, connecting with God is massively important. Thinking of, of God in that creative sense as gardener. So those that have had plants, um, you can have potted plants, indoor plants, um, just nurturing and taking care of, of those kind of things has been massively helpful. Um, I think there's been an artistic side, myself not being particularly artistic, um, but what, what I have found um, that's emerged in, in lockdown is that I've started baking. I haven't baked in 20 years, literally, um, and now find myself that I, my specialism is a vegan um, banana and walnut um, loaf cake. So there's something about bit creating that draws us close to, to God as well as nature. I think a huge hugely important parts of being contemplative, um, for sure. I think what we've seen emerge in recent years, and I think that um, the pandemic has, has maybe made it more obvious, is movements. Movements like Extinction Rebellion, like Me Too, like Black Lives Matter. Um, one of the central images for me has been that parable around, uh, we often refer to it as the Good Samaritan, but I found in lockdown, I have started to refer to it as the love your neighbor um, parable. Um, and for me, one of the strong images has been that when we think of the, um, the, the priest, the Levite walking on by, and you've got this battered, bruised person lying there, and it's the Samaritan that has come to, to, to their rescue is, is the first responder. Um, I have felt like some of those movements, Black Lives Matter, Me Too, Extinction Rebellion, they have acted like the Samaritan. They have heard the cries, they have responded. Um, and the church has been the ones to walk on by in the sense of not hearing those cries, not responding. And there are a variety of reasons for that. I think it may sound strange for the church to think about um, learning from movements that have secular roots like Extinction Rebellion, Me Too, Black Lives Matter um, and there are aspects of those movements that are hugely problematic for us as Christians when we reflect on it theologically but what they do have is an essence of hearing the cries of the battered, the bruised, the oppressed and as church we should be the forerunners, we should be the ones hearing and responding and if, we not, if we're not, then perhaps we need to hear that challenge of that love your neighbour parable that Christ spoke about um, all those years ago. And if 
if we feel uncomfortable by, by the fact that other groups are leading the way, then maybe we hear that parable in the way Jesus intended when he spoke it. It was hard for um, the, the Jews of those days to hear a Samaritan who um, was not supposed to um, know and follow Christ-like ways, to hear Jesus saying, well, actually they're acting in a more Christ-like way than you are. It was incredibly hard for us to hear, but maybe that's what we need to hear now. image that has become much clearer for me during lockdown around church is we need to reclaim um, the idea of being pilgrims and co-pilgrims on a journey. Um, I feel as though we need to be helping each other discern what the calling is on each of our lives. Where do we need to be? How long do we need to be there for? Who are we meant to be serving? Um, again, a pandemic has made it clear to us that we serve a global church and the interrelatedness of all of it. Um, there's nothing like a pandemic for you to, to really understand how interrelated we are. Uh, Christians that aren't churched, they have reflected on what world leaders have done. So world leaders that profess to be Christians, whether that is the um, president in Brazil, whether it's the president in the USA, um, because they declare that they are Christians, those who aren't Christians, aren't the church, have been saying, um, well, what does that say as to what it means to be church? And so we, as church here, have been impacted by what they're doing elsewhere. As Baptists, I think um, we are used to an understanding to some degree of being autonomous. Um, and what this pandemic has done has raised the importance of working together. Um, I found that as a congregation, we have been thinking a lot more about who our partners are. And so there are organisations like BMS World Mission, I think have been um, more on the periphery. So using a lot of their videos, um, having their voices um, speak into our context when we assemble has been hugely important. Um, I think the Joint Public Issues team, some of their resources, some of their podcasts. I think even to what's happened in Beirut, in Lebanon, it's been interesting hearing what some of the, the, the ministers, the pastors have been saying there. And um, their hope is in the global church. Um, and whatever movement you want to think about that's happening worldwide, um, Black Lives Matter has been the cry of some. Um, for me, my hope is in the global church, how we respond. We describe ourselves as a movement, but I feel as though there hasn't been much movement um, for quite a while. I think there is a lot of stagnation. People are stuck, congregations, churches are stuck. Um, and one of the reasons we're stuck, I believe, is that we haven't intentionally invest enough in um, identifying and growing leaders. We need leaders that reflect the, the social, ethnic backgrounds of our communities because we see life from um, the perspective that we, we find ourselves in. So as a, as a black woman of Caribbean heritage, um, born and raised in, in Britain, I see the world through a particular lens because of my experiences, because of the way in which my experiences have been shaped by my identity. So um, I see and bring things that only a black woman of Caribbean heritage could see and bring in this context. The focus on, on needing younger leaders, if we just think about how society has changed during lockdown, if we then think how society has changed over the last 20 years, um, we can see how um, for some leaders in their um, more advanced in their years, they found it harder to adapt and understand some of the technology. Some of the younger leaders, um, they have literally just hit the ground running because um, it's what they're used to. The world doesn't stay still. 
Um, and so we need to be prepared and ready for what may emerge, may happen as the pandemic has shown us. So for me, I, I say, um, when we look at biblical terms, we need more Lydia's, we, more, we need more Timothy's. When I look at church history, um, I look at some of the great leaders like the, the freedom fighters, like um, Sam Sharp, the Jamaican Baptist deacon that led the rebellion um, in, in Jamaica that brought slavery to its knees. I think of people like Rosa Parks, um, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and the recent late John Lewis. Um, John Lewis famously saying that we, um, we need to um, get ourselves in good trouble. Um, we need to be raising leaders um, who understand, embrace that Christ. When I think of Christ, um, you know, he would have been regarded as um, someone who got in trouble in his day. I would say good trouble, using John Lewis's words. We, if we're going to be a movement that mobilises people, that hears the cries of the oppressed, the battered, the bruised, um, then we need leaders who are able to um, respond and recognise those cries. Yeah, that's, that's my, my vision, my hope. Timothy's, Lydia's, Sam Sharp's, uh, Martin Luther King Jr's, Rosa Parks, John Lewis's, more, I say more, more please.